Hey guys. Uh, apparently I say that every time I start the video, so, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Maybe it's becoming a thing. But, uh, uh, today is Thursday, and we're going to, um, be in Romans today. I was speaking with the Lord earlier, and, and I just asked him what it is that he wants me to share. And he said one word back to me, and that was hope. That there is hope. I don't know where you are when you're listening to this, because there are many places here in the United States where they've not really been affected yet, except for having to stay at home. I, I think we're all affected in that way, but, but people that don't see the day-to-day turmoil that is is now um, in in many areas but I was on a conference call um, that stems out of DC today and uh, it's with it's with a, a, a bunch of uh, there's some pastors and there's some ministry workers that specifically deal with persecuted Christians all over the globe I was on a conference call with them today, and there was a segment that talked a lot about COVID-19, the <clears throat> um, this pandemic in other other parts of the world, other parts of the globe, and and some of the things that that were shared with uh, with people that work in different areas, like India, um, like China. Um, heard from a, a pastor that uh, that has um, a very very difficult news from China uh, in regards to the churches and what's going on there. But but other places where these these difficulties, this pandemic is hitting really hard. You don't see them in the numbers that are being displayed on TV. You, you These places are being hit in ways where where they don't have um, ways to really get the information out there. Um, even where we work in Nigeria, uh, we, we've noticed the same thing. But rest assured, even in those difficult areas where where people do not have the resources that they have here in the states there is hope there is hope because of a loving god through this entire process what he has wanted is one thing for you to turn to him turn and look to him for your hope for your grace. Those who do not know him as Savior, now is the time. Today is the day. He offers this hope. And the beautiful thing about salvation is it's hope well beyond this life. It is hope for a life in eternity with him. And then as a child of God, as somebody who has accepted Jesus Christ into their hearts, we're given hope in this world of promises that we could count on. And, and I want to get into Romans chapter 5, just the beginning few verses, verse 1 through 5, into this. But before we do, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we worship you and praise you. God, we trust you. With things as they are now, and the knowledge that it's going to get a lot worse. Even the knowledge that there is a 10-day period coming where fear will run rampant all over the globe. This 10 days of darkness. Father, I just pray that people will open their eyes to the hope that you offer. That in you there is hope. Out of you there is none. 
but in you there is hope because you are readying your bride you are bringing to task the very things that satan has done for centuries and centuries And Lord, this can be a very, very scary time, especially for those who don't understand and who don't see. So Father, I ask that you make clear your hope. Overwhelm your love. Because those choices are individual. Each person has their choice to look to you or not. So Father, as we open up your word here, send your Holy Spirit to peel back layers for us to see what you intend for us to have this in this passage, Father. We love you so much in Jesus name. Amen. I'm in Romans chapter 5. I'm going to be begin with verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And what he's, he is talking to Christians here. He's talking to those who have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior. And let me, let me explain that here for a second. Because if you're new and you're just watching these videos and you don't know what it means, you know, is Christianity just a label? No, it's not just a label. There, there is a requirement in truly being a Christian, and that is accepting his free gift, Jesus' free gift of salvation. And it's simple. It's believing that the Son of God came and became man in the flesh. He was born into this world as Jesus Christ. He was the Son of God, or it was the Son of God who chose to become a man. He lived on this earth a perfect life, was sinless. And he offered his perfect life as a sacrifice for our sin, for yours and for mine. And because death could not hold him, because he was sinless and because he was perfect, because of who he was, the Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. And even now, he sits at the right hand of the Father. He is and continues to be a hundred percent man. But he is also a hundred percent God. When you believe this, and it's as simple as that, believing those things... Then it says in the word of God, by the mouth confession is made. You pray and you ask Jesus to come into your heart. Ask him to forgive you of your sin. Come into your heart. Be the savior of your life. When you do that, immediately you are adopted into his family. Immediately you are what we call saved. You are justified of your sin. That then opens the door to relationship, which is what we've been talking about. But as we go through this, understand this is who uh, Paul is talking about in Romans. He's, he's talking to Christians. Therefore, since we've been justified by faith, that's the salvation we just talked about, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. This grace that he offers when, when we go through difficult things like this. Grace is something that is given that helps us to get through difficult things that one, we don't understand, or two, we're unable to navigate. His grace helps us do that. And he says, through this justification of faith, we have obtained access by faith, has to be by faith, into this grace. So we have to believe and have faith in the grace that he gives us. 
And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. There is hope in God's glory. There is hope in, in the, the grace that we have obtained access to. Verse 3. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance. This is a tough one. Because the only way to prove out faith is to test faith through that endurance. You could say all day, yes, Lord, I will do what you say. But until he asks you to do something and you prove that out, it's not really faith. It's not been proven. It's simply a statement. So we rejoice in our testings. We rejoice in our suffering. When we are literally tested in the things that we say and giving it to him, we rejoice in that. Why? It says because that suffering produces endurance. When you're tested for a period of time, or, or even right now, when we're locked up in, in our homes, and we have said, I want you, Lord. I want you. I give you my yes. And now, all of a sudden, we have time and focus to be able to give him that yes. Will we do it? Will we give him more time? It's through that time frame of testing, through those sufferings that we're even in right now, that our testing becomes real faith. Verse 4, And endurance produces character. And character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. That endurance is a difficult thing because it says it produces character. Character is something that's built through trial. It's built through difficulty. It's built through that endurance. When we give him our yes and we, we then become tested in the very things that we have said to him, it's in that testing that endurance is built. And it's in that testing that hope is established because it's built into our character. When, when we go through difficult things and we see the Lord provide time after time after time after time, whether it be financially, whether it be health related, whether whether it be relationship or status of relationship, um, whatever it is, when we see him provide over and over again, it builds our faith. It builds our faith. It builds the very character that we have in our hearts because we're trusting him. As he builds that character in us, it strengthens the very hope that we stepped out in in the first place. Hoping in who he is. Hoping in his word. Hoping in the very promises that he makes to us. So I want to encourage you today that hope is a powerful, powerful thing. Don't lose hope. For those of you who know Jesus Christ as Savior, know that there is nothing impossible with God. Nothing. There is complete hope. If you feel or come to the point with things coming up, you feel like there is no way out. There's no hope. There's no possible scene that you could see getting out of your situation. Fall back to his words. Fall back to the endurance of your testing and say, I believe in your truth. I believe in the hope that you give us as you build that faith in us because you're good. Because God is good. If you don't believe God is good, then that's a whole different paradigm you have to deal with. Because he is. 
He loves you immeasurably. The only proof needed for that is that he gave his only son. In fact, if you read further into this, and, and we also mentioned it in John 15, that, that it is only one who is friends with, with another, who loves another that would offer their lives. He offered his only son, and Jesus offered his life for us. And it is to produce this hope in us. It says in Hebrews that, that Abraham had hope. Abraham had hope in something he, he didn't see, and in fact he never did see. He never saw the culmination of the faith that he had hope in. But it never stopped, and it never stayed stagnant. said in, in Hebrews that, that his faith grew every day, and it was counted unto him as righteousness. See, when we have hope, hope is not just for us. Hope is what counts in our faith walk. When we have hope, it strengthens our faith to even build upon itself. It also strengthens those around us. Have you ever met somebody that is hopeless? It's just really difficult. You want to do everything you can to lift their hopes. There's nothing you can feed off of that. You have to only pour out. But look at the opposite. Have you ever met somebody or do you know somebody, been around somebody that is full of hope in any situation, even right now, full of hope? Those people your spirit can feed off of because there's love. Because hope and love and faith all endure together. And it builds upon itself and upon each other. So I want to encourage you, be careful what you speak. Be careful what you speak, even in jest. Be careful if it tears at the very fabric of your hope. Because what may begin in jest, you may realize is tearing at the very fabric of your faith. And then you find your hope wavering. So give him your faith. Give him your hope. Pour your hope out to him in full. Just say, you are my hope. I trust you. I have faith in that. And he will never let you down. I promise. He promises. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Ever. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we, we pray for those right now in different parts of the world that they don't have the capabilities that we have right now. Their hope is still in you. Circumstances may be different, but their hope is still in you. In fact, perhaps it can only be in you because those like the migrant workers in, in India that, that work in the fields and they get their day's pay and they buy their food for the day and, and they're not working now. They're not even allowed to go in so they don't have money for their daily food. Father, you are still their hope because you can place food on their table when there was none there. It doesn't have to come from the government. It doesn't have to come from the local church. It's great when it does. But it can be there because their hope is in you and the promises you make are yes and amen. You never fail on your promises. So I ask, Father, even right now, 
for those that are sitting around a table with nothing, nothing to feed themselves, nothing to feed their children. I ask that you take some of your manna from heaven, some of your secret manna, and just place it on their tables. Build their faith to know that you love them. And I know they're, they're not all Christians. I pray this especially for the Christians and that they would have hope in, in what their promises are. But God, for those who are not, I still pray for the same provision, but that they would know that it is you. That that provision came from you. Not their God not whom they believe in. In India, there are over three million gods, none of which are the God. So, Father, I just pray. I pray that you show your love and you show your provision and you bring more people right now to know you as Savior, to know your Son as Savior, than ever before in history. Keep us in your hope. Help us to have eyes to see and ears to hear what you're doing. And not what we see around us swirling and creating havoc and turmoil and chaos. But what you're doing is something very special. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see you guys tomorrow.